awesome Q&A tonight. We've got Kelly Freeman Craig, who is the writer and director of Edge of 17. There are two types of people in the world. The people who naturally excel at life. Golden boy. What's up? And the people who hope all those people die in a big explosion. Look at that stupid shirt my brother's wearing. It was clear which side of the equation I was on. Are you even up there? This was her directorial debut. So this is her first movie. It was produced by James L. Brooks. This is an amazing accomplishment for a young writer-director. Also tonight, doing our moderating is Tova Leitner. Tova Leitner is uh, the producer of movies including uh, Glory with Denzel Washington. She did Evita with Antonio Banderas and Madonna. Uh, she did Nixon with Oliver Stone. So please, please, please warm, loud applause for Kelly and Tova. <laughs> Our phrase, Sally Field, they liked it. They really, really liked it. <laughs> it's the second time that I saw it, and the first time I saw it alone and, you know, streaming, and the second time today, what a difference it is, really, to be with an audience. It's Especially so I, I, for a comedy, it's really... It was, it was I, I have to say, I snuck in the back, and I was, I was watching, just, I just caught the end, and I haven't seen it since you know, since we premiered and, and, you know, and when you're editing it, you see it way more than you ever want to. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, it was actually really neat to see it after being away from it for right. several months and all of a sudden it's like you, you experience it new, which was really neat. And it was just, it was cool to, especially Haley. I mean, I was just like so blown away by her all over again. So. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So what I, want to know, and I'm sure everybody here wants to know, is um, how does studying English at UC Irvine mm -hmm. get you to direct the second script that you wrote? I'm sure there's some voodoo involved, yeah. but yes. <laughs> short of that, can you take us through the steps how you got here? Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I started out my senior year in college, I did an internship at a production company and read like my first, you know, my first script. Who is Immortal Entertainment? I do, you know, they're, they're, I think they're no longer. They, yeah, I think they're around for like, I don't know, a Who month. Who was the principal? <laughs> I was just like, it was it familiar was, um, to me, but. It was actually a guy who was like a big mute, like rap producer and then, tr and then decided to get into movies for a hot second. Okay. So yeah, um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so I, I, at the time I was actually writing like spoken word poetry, like slam poetry, which is, yeah, and um, which is so weird now, I'm now, like I, I, it's a totally different side of myself, I, it's hard to imagine I did it, but, um, but, uh, but so anyway, I was writing essentially like monologues, you know, little characters, and then I read my first script and I was like, oh, it's, this is so you can make these different characters talk to each other, and and um, and that was exciting to me because um, I really didn't know what I was going to do right. with my life writing these little monologues essentially. Um, so uh, and then basically I you know I got really good advice right off, and that was, and I really think this is true. Somebody said to me at the very very beginning when I was 21 or 22, they said if you if you write a screenplay that's good enough, you can throw it off the side of the 405 and somebody will find it and they will make it. And I thought, you know, and I, I loved that, that, like to me that was, it, it gave the power to the writer. It said right. just, like there's so many things you can't control, but if you really can focus on, on you know, writing something, writing something good, yes. the right things will happen. Yes. So we've seen it again and again. Yeah. Still, how did you get to, you know, the genius that is James Brooks? How did you get to, how did you get an agent? How did you get basically to Jim Brooks and Gracie Films that produced this? Uh, so I, uh, I finished my first script and then like I did the thing where you give it to everybody you've ever met and ask them to pass it along if they like it. And it somehow through that chain ended up in the hands of like a real young agent at APA and who had just like gone from being an assistant to an agent. And she took the script out 
and um, and then I ended up, ended up getting work off that script, and then um, and then basically like as soon as that happens, you, you know, you go on a million general meetings and right. you meet sort of everybody, um, and then uh, and then that film was produced, and um, of course, yeah. Just your one script, you put it out there, <laughs> gets produced, no problem. Yeah. You know, well, actually, I mean that—that's it. it. Was produced into a, like it was turned into a movie that I that I just hated, right. like yeah. desperately. So it everything was great, and then I was it was just like the rug was ripped out. It, can it was be all like good exactly all the time. Yes, yes, yeah. It, but yeah, that was the thing. I actually think like that's like that y you have to have. Yes. You have to have some. You have to get beaten down a little bit. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, but that that experience just made me made me want to direct. You know, made me want to hold on to hold on to the material. Um, so then I sort of was at that this juncture where I, I was so I was so upset about the the movie going so badly on the first um, on the first mm -hmm. one that I sort of went, okay, I'm either gonna move and just be done with this, or I'm gonna go back to just write something I really care about because at the time I was also once you sort of get um, once you sort of get a script out there and get the yes. meetings and you, you start doing little rewrites and stuff like that you start doing yeah. paid gigs but that's really you're right you're always writing for somebody else right. when you're doing that type right. of work um, so anyway so I said all right I'm gonna I'm gonna really I'm gonna give it one more shot and that was this film and so um, I uh, got together with my same agent and and uh, and I said there's nobody in the world I love more than Jim Brooks like that he is the reason I want you know wanted right. to be a filmmaker and she said well we'll send it over there it's a black hole it'll never happen uh, but well, you know we'll send it yeah and it turned out that it was just it was a luck I guess because we he he was you know he was between movies and he was in his office uh, long enough to actually read it and then um, and then took well, it somebody on. in his company probably read it first and said you should look at it and it's good and all of that yeah I think yeah I, I uh, yeah the um, one of the producers Julianne sell was she was a great champion of it so um, so yeah that's what would happen you yeah know. and uh, and that's why they have young people working in the office because you know they read and and they get new writers mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff and they champion and yeah. it's like amazing. Yeah. So yeah. so James Brooks really is a genius at basically uh, combining Everything. intelligence <laughs> and 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 uh, you know comedy and heart and so on and so forth which we see in your film. But how in what way did he influence you? Uh, your writing, uh, yeah. not you personally. <laughs> Um, uh, both happened actually, but um, uh, two, two things uh, he said to me that changed everything forever. Um, the first thing is when I sat down with him uh, and we first started to go over the script, I, I started to go into this sort of this thing that you do as a writer where you go, okay, so, you know, uh, the, the, the second act crisis is here and then, you know, and talking all this sort of like screenwriter speak. Right. And, um, and he sort of stopped me and he said, the first and most important thing you have to do is figure out what are you saying about life in this story. And um, it was the first time a producer, someone in Hollywood had said something like that, something with weight <laughs> like that Profound. to me. You know, usually everyone's like, well, what's the trailer moment, yes. you know? Um, <laughs> and so, uh, so it was really, it was such a gift to me because it was just, it was essentially, what's the point? What's right. the point? Why do we go to this movie, you right. know? Um, and so I sort of, I, um, I took some time and then figured out what that was for me and, um, and then started writing again. So that was the first piece of advice. And the second was, uh, he said, uh, always do research. So, um, so I, like, always do interviews. So I went and I like I hung out at high schools and I and every teenager I could possibly get my hands on like I would just, I'd be like can you talk to me like you know and I would I would just ask him a bunch of questions and ask if I could kind of be a fly on the wall and just hang out and it was um I mean it's amazing because there's so many little details that you get out of that right. that you can't that you, you that you can't make up and it's also it changes it 
for me, it just changed my sense of, of what I wanted to do because I started out and I was really, the, the, tone, the tone of the script initially was just, it was much more, uh, it, the comedy was broader, it was more, it was playing, la you know, it was laugh every other line, it was, right. you know, it was really pushing into the comedy. And then when I sat down with, um, with all these different teenagers, I found that it was, it was also really painful and, you know, and heartbreaking and funny, but, but also right. heartbreaking. So it's sort of, so I felt like I wanted to go back to the drawing board and get both those pieces. You know what I like about the, this movie, your movie, is it keeps surprising us, you know? Mm -hmm. Unexpected dialogue, characters, uh, plot twists, even the casting. I mean, Hayden is an alumni of this school. Is he really? Yeah. So did you write him in a script as you know, Asian, or did it come out of the casting and meeting people? Uh, no, I, I wrote him as, as Asian American. Yep, yeah. Um, and, uh, and... It was a very unexpected kind of a character. It gave it a real... You know, I've seen the thing before where the girl goes for the hot guy and it's really the, the you know, the other mm -hmm. guy, the nerd, but he had a particularly, you know, I think uniqueness to he's him. He's so lovable. He's so lovable and he is in real life too. I mean, yeah. And he was, you know, interestingly, like he was one of the first people we cast before we ever cast Haley or Woody or anybody. He, and you know, we were really? sure we were gonna have to search forever to find him. And he was like the third guy who walked in the door. <laughs> and we were like, thank you, God. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. The movie also reminds me a little bit of John Hughes' movies, the way he captured teenagers. And, oh, uh, thank you. You know, and the music and the tone of both comedy and, you know, um, the I angst. I love those. I love those angst. films I growing know. up. Okay, I'm going to open up for a question for the students because it's for you guys. I really loved uh, the character of Nadine, and uh, I kind of modeled my protagonist in my thesis project after her. Mm. Um, and one of my favorite things about her is how you made her so abrasive and standoffish, and yet she was funny and cool and quippy. Um, so I was wondering how you approached balancing that where you could make her so unlikable and likable at the same time, so flawed and yet yeah. empathetic. Yeah, that's such a good question because that was always the biggest challenge uh, of, of the film and of the writing um, because I really, I really wanted to allow her to be every shade, you know, and um, and and for when she was in those moments where she's she's a jerk, for you to be able to forgive her because you see another moment where she's in a lot of pain and you see where the why she was a jerk, you know, um, those are my favorite characters, you know, um, and. Uh, you know, it was interesting. So in the writing, I was always sort of aware of the moments, the moments we feel for her and the moments we go, oh, too much, you know, um, and trying to kind of do this push-pull thing the whole time. Um, and then uh, in the actual shooting of it, it was, it was always in the back of my mind, how do we keep this really delicate balance? Because it was such a, it felt like, it, it felt like in some moments a high wire act. And by the way, so much of the credit for why I think um, she works is Haley because she can seamlessly move between those moments where she's a jerk and then those moments where she's just heartbreaking and soft and you know and um, and in a lot of pain uh, but so I would a lot of times do the takes on a spectrum so essentially I would say okay let's push it real let's push you like real into the asshole zone and now let's pull you back so you're you're it's softer, you know, and um, and you know one of the greatest pieces of advice that I got from Jim Brooks and that I always pass along is to get choices when you're shooting, because you think as a writer you think you know well no it's this this is the delivery I know I've heard it in my head a million times I know this will work, but the truth is until you get into the edit, you don't really know and you want to be able to have a lot of different options 
to be able to shape the movie and feel it and go, ooh, this is, it's getting to be a little too much here. We need to pull it back or we need, we can go further here. Let's, let's see what else we've got. So yeah. Thank you so but much. Great question. <laughs> Hi, um, I just want to say that I absolutely love the movie and your directing was amazing. At my high school film, um, program. They actually had us recreate one of your scenes for the amazing directing to exercise oh. our directing skills. Oh yes. man, that's so <laughs> awesome! Which uh, scene did which scene? Um, the diner scene, the where she's playing with the shoe and then she throws it. Oh the wall. wow, that's so we cool! We had to recreate the scenes for the that. directing. <laughs> um, um, so my question is: At what age did you know that you want to do directing? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Ever when I was like 13 or 14, there was um, I don't I don't think like these even really exist anymore. But like the thing was music videos on MTV. Like and so you'd be like really bored all summer, and all you'd do is sit in front of the TV and watch music videos. And so I I feel like I kind of got indoctrinated to the idea of like images and music and it just it was it was cool filmmaking it was like they were little short films um and so around then i started to make little music videos with my friends um and uh but interestingly like i never i never thought oh i i could do this as a career it was just it was fun um and then later uh when i started to write uh, and then I, I realized that film is really such a director's medium. That's when I, that's sort of when I came back to, oh, hey, you know, I've always, I've always thought this way. And, and I write very visually. Like I, I sort of, as I'm writing, I'm seeing shots a lot of times. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. A lot of the directors said that they have the movie in their head yeah. before they start shooting. It's yeah. interesting. I love Hi. the movie, by the way. You're amazing. Oh, um, thank you. I was just wondering, what made the actors stand out during the auditioning process? Oh, um, so, uh, God, good question. Because this was really, like, really every role in this, there was, like, there was no second place. There was no, like, okay, this person, but then this person could work. It was, like, the character that you know who we cast and then everybody else was just miles away um and um you know i think it, it in a lot of ways it's it's subtlety it's the listening you know it's the moments in between the lines you know um that uh that i'm always watching you know sort of what's happening behind somebody's eyes sort of being alive in every moment um which i think I think the actors do so well. Uh, particularly, I think, um, I mean, everybody, but um, but uh, Haley Lou Richardson, who really, you know, she has less lines. She's a, you know, she, who plays Krista. A lot happens on her face um, when she, it's not like she's, she's not stealing the show, but uh, like exactly what should happen on her face happens, you know, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, first of all, that was an awesome movie. Uh, I'm, I'm actually not really too much of a fan of these type of movies, but I enjoyed it a lot. So that was like, <laughs> yeah, um, blew my mind away. Um, but so yeah, I was wondering, you know, during the process of making that movie or during your process of um, becoming a director, have mm -hmm. you ever had a moment where you were just like, you know, nothing's working, I want to give up, life's terrible. And if you did, if you did, um, how did you overcome that? And, <laughs> What advice would you give okay. for everybody in this room who would have encountered that moment or is or might have might be encountering that moment? Like how, how do you overcome that? Such a good question. First of all, like <laughs> hourly. I mean, really, like like that's your so much of the job is getting out of your own way. Like getting away from that voice that's like this is terrible, you suck. It's you know what I mean? Like you have to somehow like tie that little person up and throw them in the closet, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, all, all the time. And I think, like, writing especially, because it's such a solitary activity, you can, you can go down, you can go to the dark place really easily, you know? Um, uh, but, I, yeah, I mean, I think so much of it is just 
showing up the next day to do the work. Mm -hmm. Just showing up. Just saying, I said at 9 o'clock I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm a little scared. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm going to show up, you know? Just stick to schedule. <laughs> yeah. I, in some ways, like, that is, I think, a great... Um, it's, it's, it's sort of just a great way to just get past your, not waiting for the inf inspiration, not waiting for the, the, the mean voices in your head to go away, you know? If you wait for that, you, you'll never do it, you know? So you sort of just have to just show up. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. But that's so part of it. I feel like any, I, I will say this, like if anybody says, that they're not experiencing that, <laughs> they're lying, or <laughs> they're not doing very good work. Because that's part of it. It's, yeah. it's torturous. And sometimes you hate yourself, and that is part of it. So no, that's just par for the course. Right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, I want to say really thank you because this film is amazing. And I think for all people who are here, a lot of us are like um, young people who try to learning. Uh, we are on the like, maybe first and sec or second step of our way. Yeah. And for me right now, it's really a real inspiration. So thanks a lot. Oh, that's so great um, to hear. And I want to ask you why you decided to make your first, I think it's so important, your first movie about teenagers. Uh, right. So I, there's something about this age that has always really interested me because I remember the feeling of it so vividly. Like I, the other day I was, I was just, I was driving along with my husband and a song came on the radio that was a song that was very popular when I was in high school. And it was like, I mean, it, it like just knocked me over. I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> you know, I was, it was just so just lonely and awful. And, um, and also um, like, you experience the lowest lows, but also the highest highs. Like I remember other moments of that age where I felt euphoric. I felt, it felt like anything was possible. And so I love, I love, I guess the drama of this age. I love, like I feel like in some ways you're never quite so alive as you are this age when everything feels like life and death. Cause you really don't know, you're, you don't know, you haven't had enough life experience yet to know like when something bad happens to you, you'll live, like it's okay, it's gonna go away eventually and you'll get back on your feet. Like you really think it's the end of the world. Um, <laughs> and that's just, that's interesting to me. That's, yeah. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Good evening, good evening. My question is, what do you feel after watching a good film? I mean, you, you seen, you watching a film, a very cool one, and there is a credits comes and what emotional state are you in in these first seconds when it's ended? Mm. When, I, when I watch a film I really love, I usually am just sort of, I'm sort of pinned to my chair for a few minutes, just kind of going, wow. And my favorite is, is really just when I go, that is so true. That is so true. And I, and I guess it's really like, it's what I'm really talking about, I guess, is just like relatability. When you see yourself in the characters or in the moments and you go, God, I've been there, I've felt that. And I think that, like to me, that's why I got into film. I like the certain books and films, like I felt like saved me when I felt really bad in time, in moments. Like to see somebody else going through it was just like, oh God, okay. You know, we're not, I'm not alone. Like we're, we're in this together. And, um, and so, yeah, I guess I, I hope like everything I write and, and everything I look as I'm looking at future projects, I'm always looking for that, that feeling where you can go, man, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Hi, that was a great movie. I, this is actually, I've seen it a couple of times even prior to coming here. So I was oh. excited tonight to come see it again and actually get to ask you some questions. Um, awesome, thank you. I heard you saying a lot in the beginning because you said you were in the editing room. That's actually what I came here when I med um, ma majored for like the 12 weeks that I did. Um, so yeah. you do the directing, the writing, and the editing. So you're in the room also with those final cuts. Um, yeah. For me, it's kind of backwards because, like I said, I started out with editing, and then yeah. as I do things, I have all these ideas, and I'm like, but I've never written, I've never directed, and then people yeah. are like, you would be good at this, or maybe you should go in that direction, and is that something like so crazy to kind of go from like wanting to start out with like digital editing, then I'm like, oh, and I do, I have all these ideas, and I write them down, and yeah. then I don't know how to like express it. Like I love how you did like all your characters, and y you know, I, like I love the dry sense of humor, Woody Harrelson, and I love how like how Haley does. She has that like up like that lovable, hateable like thing about her, and you mm -hmm. like really grabbed everything so well. And mm -hmm. I feel like you did. You were really involved all around, weren't you? In like your whole production of your movie, huh? Yeah, and but you know, I so are you so. Currently, so, I'm not here. I was here last year. Um, I did a 12-week course, um, okay. like I said, in editing. So you started in editing, and then you're sort of thinking about, well, should I think about writing and directing? And you know, and is it is it strange to go backwards? Is that what you're asking yeah, yourself? Yeah, and it's it, and I yeah. feel like it kind of all ends up kind of going together in a circle. It's not like yeah. you're just going to do one thing because every time I kind of dabble in something, I'm like. I feel like I have to totally change my major or totally change where right. I was thinking yes. because it's just in it, you know, it's this direction, that direction, because there's a lot of everything involved. Like, yeah, and I mean, and the yeah. truth is, when you're, they're all pieces of the same puzzle. So I think it makes sense that when you're in editing, you go, God, if I directed this though, I would do blah, 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 <laughs> and then it would make this edit so much easier or yeah. whatever, you know? Um, and I actually think, um, Editing and writing are very similar. Like I, I feel like it's the same part of my brain I that like works. That. I, I, I get that. I do know what you're saying with that. That's why, like, when yeah. it started to come to me. But I'm so scared too because I've never written. So it's like I, I'm like you said, we're our own worst. Like, yes. I mean, like get out of your own head. Like, I just, I mean, what's the paper going to yell at me? No. Right. <laughs> like, yes. But, yes. Exactly. But it feels that way. It's very intimidating to actually take all that and put it down. But... Totally. Totally. And so, I mean, really, like, so much of it is getting past that. And I still, I still have to wake up and get past that. It. I, I have bad news. It never goes away. <laughs> like, so, but that's, but that's also good news because you can know that it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? No, I do. Cause, I do. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've made a movie and I still feel that shitty. So and you, you still get I mean? like the nerves. So it's not, it doesn't, because you feel shitty, it doesn't mean anything. You and know you what I mean? Have people help you write though? Like, do you have any, but like, I, I mean, like your, your team that surrounds you, you know, cause I'm making a movie, it, it, you know, it is you like that starts out, but the people that you found to surround you, what is your best way of going about that? Like finding your support group what, to make this like come about, like, yeah, um, you know, a, a couple different things. First of all, I think it's so important that, especially when you're at the, the beginning stages where your, your idea is just a little seed of an idea. It's just like a little sprout, you know? It's very fragile. Let only, only very select people in, people that you feel like are going to nurture it and not squash it. Um, and I think that's so important because you're at a stage where you're not confident in it yet because it's just a little thing and you're not sure and who knows if it'll grow into a tree and I'm just trying to get this thing to work, you know? Um, so it's, I think it's really important who you choose. Um, and uh, so producers, essentially, like that's, that's their job to be kind of the, the person going, yeah, it looks, it looks good, it's growing, it's doing the right thing, you know? Um, so yeah, I'd say that. And then once you kind of get it on its feet more, then you can go, okay, I feel a little more confident about this. I can kind of, you know, send it out to a few more people and get feedback and, and sort of let your team grow from there. That, that yeah. makes sense. No, thank you very much though. And like yeah. I said, again, I really enjoyed everything. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I like the story so much. Um, if you had the chance to go back in the time, would you like to change in the story or as a director? 
What a good question. Um, I probably, what would I change? I really, you know, I got really lucky that I had a wonderful experience on this. Um, I probably... Uh, it got nominated and won all kind of awards, you know, <laughs> for the movie, for first time director. It really struck, uh, you know. So, but ask her about the movie before that, yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would change. I could. I could. We could talk for hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, but essentially, what it, what do you learn after you do something creative? And so I always kind of go back and I think, how could I have been a better, how could I have been a better uh, communicator as a director? How could I have empowered people more? Um, how could I have, you know, gotten the best out of people? Because that's so much of what the job is too. It's about getting the best out of the people that are around you, you know? And that's a specific skill. It's a, it's a, in a way, like I think, like I was saying, I think writing and editing are very similar. Directing is, is very different than the, those two things because it's much more about drawing people out of themselves, like setting the stage so that people can do their best work. And, um, and that's more, it's more managerial, it's more nurturing. Um, it's a different, it's a different skill set. So I feel like I'm always trying to improve that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to start by saying that I'm a huge fan of your work and I was so excited when I saw that you're coming. Um, I love, I saw this movie twice in theaters and I Aww. love your work in postgrad as well, um, with the writing in it. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was just wondering for me, um, Nadine is such a relatable character. Um, so I was just wondering what are some characters or certain films that you've related to a lot? Mm, great question. Um, I, I love, uh, Alexander Payne films. I love, like, I love Sideways, um, Election, Descendants. Um, I, I, so many of Jim Brooks' films I love. Um, I think, like, As Good As It Gets is a perfect movie. Um, and, uh, and, uh, Cameron Crowe, Say Anything. Like, probably Lloyd Dobler, I remember always just feeling, feeling totally connected with. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. What was the last one you said? Uh, uh, Cameron Crowe, Say Anything. Yeah. God, you're so much younger than me, but we, it's like the same movies. <laughs> you're like an old soul. <laughs> um, Hi. So my question was, is that what was it like, um, since you are a first time director, I think, yeah. What was it like directing your first film? Like, did, were you nervous at all? Or was like, what oh, was yeah. it like? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, cause you're like, I hope these people don't know, like, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're just trying to, you know, you just, uh, you show up and you fake it. But the great thing is, uh, uh, you figure it out pretty quickly. So, I mean, the, the, the hard part about being a first time director for me is I came from writing. So I didn't, know, like, I, I like was on a set maybe one time ever. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, okay, so this guy does that and that, you know, like it was, that was, it was all new for me. Um, but it only, t you know, I mean, you know, if you've ever been on a set, it really only takes a couple days to know like, okay, I get what everything, how everything works, how sort of all the machinery works and, and, uh, and this gets done. Um, and then the great thing is, once you get past those, that, those like first day jitters, you are just like, you're in a sprint. So you do not have time to have any self-consciousness. Like, in fact, I feel like I entered like a weird Zen state because I was so busy that I was like, I had no, I have no concept of myself. It's just, you're just serving the film and you're, you're just trying to keep the ball rolling, you know? Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, thank hi. you for making such a great film. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, is there any uh, particular scene or uh, 
saying in the movie that's uh that is from your own real life experience and uh do you have any advice for the for people who wants to write anything that uh happened in their uh real life yeah um so n so thankfully no <laughs> um but uh but in some ways, every mo you know, I think as a writer, in some ways, like every moment you're writing, you're, it's coming from somewhere, you know what I mean? You, you got to be able to feel into it, you know, and little moments and they're all coming from a personal place at some point. Um, and I think uh, if you, are you writing about something personal? Uh, y yes, kind of, but it's not a uh, hundred percent from my real life experience. It's like very, uh, it's like spiritually, uh, from my real life experience. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah hundred well, percent doesn't have to be. It, it should. Yeah. The, the beautiful thing about writing is that you get to make up the ending. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get to make up the parts that weren't that great in life, you know? <laughs> um, and there's, a, there's this great, uh, uh, Nora Ephron thing. She said, she said, uh, she would always say everything is copy. And by that she meant like if every bad, humiliating, awful thing that happens to you, the great thing is it's material, you know? <laughs> um, and she talks about how, uh, if you slip on a banana peel, everybody laughs at you. But if you tell the story of yourself slipping on a banana peel, suddenly they're laughing with you and you own the story and you're in control of it. And I think that's one, one of the most wonderful things about writing is that you, you are able to make, truly make lemons into lemonade. Oh, great, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. That was good. <laughs> Hi, uh, first of all, I really love the movie, love the dialogues and especially the characters talking about characters, I wanted to know if there is any character that you relate to the most in the movie? Oh, um, I mean, probably, uh, probably Nadine, uh, yeah. Haley's character, yeah. It's, it's interesting, like, in high school, I was probably more, I, I, I think I, like, presented myself probably more like Darian, like I had it together, but inside, I was totally Nadine, you know? <laughs> Um, so I related to both of them, you know, um, and she was really, she was really therapeutic to write because she just got to say anything, you know, <laughs> she just, it le just letting it all hang out, which was, which was nice. All right. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, um, first of all, I want to say I love this movie so much. When I was watching, I could relate to it so much. At points, there were so many times when I like felt like I was living it, actually. Oh, um, man. I'm but, sorry. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but my, um, my question was, do you have any advice for creating characters and moments that are so real and so relatable? And how much of that came from your own life experiences and how much came from like the research that you said you did, like interviewing teenagers and stuff? Yeah. Um, you know, I, whenever I sit down to write, I'm always, I, there's, there's always this voice in the back of my head saying, but is this as true as it can possibly be? Sometimes you'll have somebody say a line or there'll be a moment and, and I, sometimes you're like, am I writing this because I've seen that somewhere? I've seen that in a movie or I think that's what they should say. But if I really like jump into this person's body and imagine myself there. How do I feel? What do I want to do? What, what's the truest thing um, that would happen here? That's, like, that's a thing I'm constantly trying to do. Um, and uh, and I'm, always, I'm always, I guess, also trying to go, like if I have an instinct to push a character one direction, um, then, then I will, I'll always go, okay, but what's, what's the opposite of that that we don't see? You know what I mean? If publicly they're, they're um, you know, like Mr. Bruner seems like he doesn't give a shit about life or anything, you know? And then I liked the idea that you found out that privately, you know, he has, he has this really sort of warm, great life that he cares a lot about, you know, that he actually does have a big heart. Um, 
So I'm always, I guess, looking for those things that feel antithetical to each other. Because um, I think th I think somewhere in there, that's where the truth is. That we're, uh, we're constantly like, we're just, we're opposites all the time. We're just, we're contradictions all the time. And some, and that always feels true to me. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. So as a writer and director, when you're writing a character down and then when you actually see an actor embody that character and they bring something new that you didn't expect, which scenes in the movie did you find a, an actor bro brought to the character that you didn't expect that you decided to keep and change in comparison to what you had originally, originally imagined? Oh, it, it's such a great question because that's, that is really the fun of being on a set and directing. The best part is that you have these incredibly talented people and they are all coming with their own ideas, you know? And um, my favorite thing was to, was to show up and, and have an actor come with an idea that I never thought of. And all of a sudden I'm like, and you're just like, wow, that is so much better than what I thought. Thank you. Um, that's the best day. That's the best day when you show up and, and it's, it's something you didn't even think of. And there are a million cases. Um, uh, Hayden, who plays Irwin, uh, he, he's such a talented improviser. And so, I, you know, I was constantly just sort of giving him room to play and try things. And so a lot of, the, a lot of his stuff, like where he yells off the Ferris wheel, like, can we get off the fucking ride? That's just him <laughs> improvising, because he was just like sick of going around the Ferris wheel. Um, so, and, it, and then she laughs, and that was her real laugh, and you know, and we end up using it. So um, he, was, he was just so wonderful because of all these great little, his little in-between moments, his little asides. Like, I would just let the camera roll. Like, I would just, I would just let it roll, like, way past when the scene was over because he'd just be really uncomfortable and trying to think of new things to say, which was perfect for the character. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> So my last question, what's next for you? Uh, I'm doing uh, another thing with, uh, with Jim Brooks. I'm doing my next thing with him. Just oh, working with one of the greatest talented people in the business, creating new movies. Uh, well, I wanted to thank you so much because I knew you were so busy in writing because every time we try to get, like, is she coming? You yeah. can reach her. She is writing. Oh, so, <laughs> so I'm so glad that you made it. Yeah. And I think that um, we have learned so much from you today, oh, really. And the first advice when she started out is if you write something really, really good, you can throw it off the freeway <laughs> and somebody will catch it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I mean, you have to learn to drive first. What? <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, and also have to be a good catcher. But basically, <laughs> that is really is. It's about True. the work. And I think you did, you worked for a long time interviewing. You really put the work into it. You know, there's no question about it. I know Nancy Meyer for a long, long time, and it's like she takes a year to write a script. Mm, mm -hmm. But at the end of the year, the actors want to do it. Yes, yeah, yeah. And she writes it, and she has people, you know, she has a table read, and she gives to people, and she checks it out, and mm -hmm. she makes it. And at the end, you know, it's a good script. Yeah. And so a lot of people are running to catch it off the freeway. There's a whole yeah. paparazzi standing <laughs> around the freeway trying to yes. catch your screenplay. So um, I really, really thank you so much thank for coming you. here. And we're looking forward to see her next movie, right? Very soon. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>